Well, time now to sit down for a conversation with Australian singer, songwriter, author, scriptwriter and several other things, Nick Cave. Cave's musical career stretches back over three decades. Fronting acts like The Boys Next Door, The Birthday Party, more recently Grind Man, but it's been the bad seeds that he's most readily associated with. This week, their 15th album, Push the Sky, became their first to make it to number one in this country. It comes following the departure of founding member Mick Harvey, who left in 2009. The record is more pared back compared to recent ventures and at times exudes even a sombre air. I spoke with Nick Cave yesterday to discuss how his songwriting has evolved over the years, its increasingly visual quality and his continuing creative partnership with violinist Warren Ellis and began by asking whether the mood of the album reflected his own at the time of its writing. It is There is no need to forgive I was not in a somber mood when I made this record. I was in a state of joy and uh, and normally am in that in, in, in feel, feeling that way when I'm making a record with the bad seeds you know It's pared down because it doesn't have any guitar in it. Um, Mick Harvey left the, 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 the group and he, he was basically the guitar player. Um, and we kind of always thought we need to get another guitar player, but let's go and make the record first and see if we need one and, and the, and the, for this particular record. And the music had this sort of space in it suddenly. Um, and we did a few overdubs and then we just took those away as well because it just sounded so beautiful. Um, there was this kind of cathedral-like space in in the whole in the whole thing, and and the songs seemed to be made up rather than a, a, of a kind of driving engine through the thing, made up of the sort of peripheral sounds in some way, and and it just sounded beautiful to us. So, so does that change the the context for what you've written when it's in that kind of sonic space? No. What do you mean? Well. I, I, I mean, it's being... I mean, no, absolutely not. What do you mean? <laughs> it's being married to something uh, slightly different to what you might have done in the past. It's so the context of it has changed. Does it change the, the way that you receive the lyrics? Yeah, I mean, uh, when I went into the studio, there were, there were definitely ideas, of course. There were musical ideas floating around before we, we went in. Um, and I had some vague notion of what the sort of what, what the music would be like that I would be singing over, but very vague. Um, and it could have gone either way with those lyrics. They're, they're not necessarily uh, somber. I use that word somber lyrics in, in more than any other lyrics that I write. In fact, they're more abstracted, I would say, um, and less. Yeah, they're more abstracted, but the mu- the music certainly. Um, kind of gave, gave the lyrics a certain atmosphere. You know. On that note, you write very visually. You have a, a capacity to put I- images in people's heads. And then it's not narrative-based, is it? You, you, the stories really are about um, seeing the imagery and feeling that sense as opposed to delivering a story. Yeah, they become more, more and more like that. Um, I'm a narrative songwriter. Uh, I'm a storyteller. That's always been the way. It, it, right from very early on, I kind of realised that I had a connection to the songs that I wrote that were narrative that I didn't have to to other sorts of songs. This is way back, you know, when I was just starting to write songs, and it, it was quite clear that I that I was interested in sort of building a a kind of alternate world that was very visual and very and you know, people by characters and, and places and that sort of thing. So, but I think these days the lyrics are more abstracted. So there's no linear story as such, but certainly a, um, a, a visualness about them and an, an atmosphere that you kind of enter at the beginning of the song and are kind of released at the end. So, uh, and the whole album feels like that as well. It feels, yeah feels old school in that way. 
and I'm pushing my wheel of love up Jubilee streets. I look at me now. It feels also very cinematic, which ties in, I, I take it, to your experiences in script writing. I mean, is, is there a correlation between those two experiences? Um, not really. I mean, it's, it's a coincidence, is it? Well, script writing is uh, the only reason I do script writing is because I have a uh, my, a lot of practice at uh, at telling stories. You know, I've always told stories since I was a child. I've told stories. You know, I used to entertain my little sister who, when we lived in the same, you know, slept in the same bedroom, um, by telling her stories at night. You know, that was my my jo job. The rest of the time, I um, made her life absolute misery. But at night, I would tell her a story to get get her to go to sleep. And it's that kind of. Uh, I've always looked at the world in that way, in terms of. In, in visually, visually, mm. certainly, I'm, I don't feel kind of as tied down to the the kind of tyranny of the narrative in the in the way that that I used to. You know, things like m the murder ballads and all of that sort of stuff. The great failing for me with those songs is is that you have to listen to a story. You know, when you put on the record, when you when you put on a piece of music, it's not really what you want to do. You put on a piece of music, you want it the. The idea of music really is that you can put it on and it just enters your bloodstream in a kind of subconscious sort of way and it's not something where you have to kind of concentrate on the piece to, for it to have its desired effect. And, and I, f I, f I, I personally can't bear songs that, that or a lot of songs that, that deliver a story in some way and that you've, you've, you've got to enter the song in that way. So after much anguish really in the songwriting process I, I think I developed the kind of way to be visual and to be narrative but but narrative in in the sense that you don't actually have to follow a story so it's be it, it you're aiming for more pure visceral emotion as opposed to you know an, an intellectual journey of any kind not an intellectual journey a m more just more just following a you know, you know, I mean, I think these days we can swap the verses around. You know, we could put the third verse where it was the first verse and such. So, so in the murder ballads, you can't do that. They've got to go in a certain order. They have a dramatic arc and they have a beginning and an end and all of that sort of stuff. Um, they are much more like screenplays, actually, mm -hmm. than songs, some of those things. And is the music then representing that? As well, I mean the 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 way that Warren has put loops into the music these days, the idea that it's again doesn't have a uh, <coughs> a more traditional arc, uh, is that a reflection of the, of that approach too? Yeah, that, that, I think that comes out. We work very much, me and Warren, on the writing of the music together from the from you know the ground up. So. That's quite different than I than than it's been. Say with 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 uh, writing songs with anyone else over the years, um, we we sit down and write songs together. Like I don't know, Bacharach and David or something like that. You know that that <laughs> kind that kind of songwriting partnership where we write together outside of the studio situation. Something like um, say something with Mick or Blixer in the past would have been or, or anyone else who's contributing the songs would have would have would have uh, that all happened within the studio we, we we are actually a kind of weirdly have become this sort of songwriting partnership um which is really in, which is amazing for me because um you know you only have a certain uh amount of ideas and a certain amount of uh um well, you know, it's it, 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 to work collaboratively at this point in my career with someone like Warren is is really amazing because it's it's um, very much rejuvenated my um, way of songwriting and even lyric writing in a weird kind of way. Can I ask you what it is that he brings to your particular chemistry that has done that for you? 
Um, first of all, he, apart from just, I don't know if you know Warren, but, but his unbelievable optimism and, and, and uh, enthusiasm to the process is staggering. Um, but he also brings with him a kind of cachet of sounds and, and, uh, and rhythms and stuff like that, that, that it's, it's impossible to get you know that, that only he can, only he can get that I can that, that I can never go near on just sitting down at a piano and trying to write like that. And I've long since exa exhausted my uh, the, the sort of songs that I can write on the piano. So 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 suddenly there is this um, new way of writing because because of the nature of Warren's loops or the nature of a loop anyway, it's, it's a linear thing. It just begins and it repeats itself to the end. So that by its very nature gets rid of certain song structures that I've been locked into for, for years, which is verse choruses and all of that sort of stuff. And it, and it dispenses a lot with that kind of thing. And it actually suits the way that I write lyrics very well because they are linear and, and visual and narrow. Shriek at the edge of the water, shriek to speak and reach for the speech, hear reach for the speech and be heard. But you grow old and you grow cold, yeah you grow old and you grow cold. This record sees you uh, introducing elements which are very close to your home. In fact, the album cover is shot inside your home and some of the uh, scenarios are very close to where you live in Brighton. And that's obvious from one perspective in that it's what's around you. But it's also, in some ways, bringing your audience very close to something that's very personal to you. Is that how it feels? Um, I think, um, you know, it, it was a big... Oh, I was going to say it was a big decision whether to put that cover, uh, you know, the, the particular picture on on the on the cover. But this is the cover of uh, your your in your bedroom with, with your wife tiptoeing naked through the the room. Yeah, that's one way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to say it was a big decision, but actually it w it wasn't a big decision. It's kind of a no brainer for that because the photo was so beautiful. We just sort of I said, hey, let's put that. You know, let's put that. And she's like, oh. Um, but uh, the consequences of that cover was, was something that we didn't really kind of uh, understand. In the, it just was a cool picture for a cover. You know, now, the, now the, the, you know, my wife, there's pictures of my wife naked on the roadies laminates and, and stuff like that, you know, and it's suddenly like, uh, it's, <laughs> it's kind of a... Um, uh, we, we d I don't think we un understa understood the implications of or having it six metres high and you know the middle of Piccadilly Circus or whatever. Um, but anyway, it, it, um, the record is about, it is very much about um, where I live or it's the big, the, it, well, sorry I'm not explaining this wrong. The, it, it's really about the songwriting process in a lot of ways and the songwriting process begins where, where I live and it's it's about taking aspects of one's life, one's relatively normal existence and sort of grinding them through the mill of the imagination and, and producing something that, that isn't uh, of this world. Mm. But does, does it mean that you have to be careful where that line is between the, the public persona of what you project as Nick Cave, the entity and you know who you are as a, a human being with privacy. I, I don't think there's much difference anyway. No. You know, I think um, the entity, if you want to call it that, eventually sort of cleaves itself onto onto whatever remnants of a normal human being you have left, and you just become that thing. Um, and that's part of the deal. It, 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 it's very much. It's a peculiar occupation in that way, in that in that it it, um, it, it takes over for sure. You even wind of the eyes, distant waves and waves of distant love. You wave and say goodbye.
The sounds there of Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds from their 15th album, Push the Sky Away. And that track, Wide Lovely Eyes, you also heard some of Jubilee Street, Water's Edge, and We Know Who You Are in that conversation with Nick Cave that I had uh, yesterday about this album and about uh, the progress and evolution of his songwriting. Nick Cave is in the country with the Bad Seeds, playing dates across Australia at the moment. RN, your world unfolding. (laughs) 